The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says there's still room for an agreement after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dismissed the ceasefire proposal. The deal was put forth by Hamas after mediation by the Qatari, by Qatar and Egypt. Mohammed Jamdoum reports from Tel Aviv. Less than a day after Hamas submitted its response to a potential Gaza ceasefire plan, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel, hoping to build on that momentum. But hours after meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel all but rejected the current framework for a cessation of hostilities. Now is the time for the Israeli Defense Forces to allow safe corridors for the residents of Rafah. We shall continue destroying the capabilities of Hamas until we achieve that. And I emphasize we have no other option but decisive victory. Hamas, for its part, said that, unlike Israel, they had taken a positive approach to the ceasefire proposal. Netanyahu and his government are seeking to continue to mislead the public opinion in Israel and to prolong its aggression despite the losses they are sustaining in personnel and equipment. With the attempts to halt the war seemingly at a standstill, one significant point of contention continues to be whether any agreed-to ceasefire would be permanent. Despite the diplomatic setbacks, at a press conference in Tel Aviv, Lincoln insisted a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas was still a possibility. Good evening. We had uh, an opportunity today to discuss with the Israeli government the response that Hamas sent last night to the proposal that the United States, Qatar, and Egypt uh, had put together uh, to bring the remaining hostages home and extend the humanitarian pause. Uh, what I can tell you about these discussions is that while there are some clear non-starters in Hamas's response, uh, we do think it creates space for agreement to be reached. And we will work at that relentlessly until we get there. It was an intense day of talks for America's top diplomat. At the end of it, Antony Blinken did offer a positive outlook on ultimately finding a path to peace. But he also gave few details about how America now envisions finding a way to end the war. Mohammed Jamjoum Al Jazeera, Tel Aviv. He's joining us from occupied East Jerusalem. So the prime minister has ordered his troops to push further into Rafah, as we've been hearing. At the same time, Rory dismissing a ceasefire proposal by Hamas. How are we to understand this? And what happens next when it comes to the negotiations? Well, from the point of view of Jerusalem, from the point of view of Netanyahu's coalition government, there is no change. The war goes on. From the point of view of Hamas in the uh, tunnels underneath Gaza, there is no change uh, and the war goes on. And from the point of view of the people in the ruined streets uh, on the surface of Gaza, in the, in the tent camps, of course, there as well, there is no change. They can continue to be killed and the war goes on. In D.C., in uh, Doha, in Cairo, and in Riyadh as well, well, there's going to be some head-scratching and trying to work out how they can take things forward and what next. You could hear the disappointment, I think, from, uh, from Anthony Blinken in that press briefing yesterday. You know, he didn't just come here to put a, a brotherly arm around Israel and try to guide it back towards a, a quote-unquote more acceptable form uh, of warfare. He came to get a deal, uh, and he didn't get it. He reminded me in that press conference of, uh, you know, a, a spurned lover who's just had a massive rejection but still thinks uh, he's got a chance. He is trying to keep the possibility of uh, a renewed uh, ceasefire alive, and he is going to be trying to work out where the uh, possibility is for uh, bridging that huge gulf between the positions of Hamas uh, and the positions of the Netanyahu government. And he might be right, there might be a chance, but at the moment uh, he is going back to D.C. after wrapping up a few other uh, supplementary meetings here in uh, this part of the world. He's going back to D.C. and he's going back empty-handed. Okay, thank you. Rory Challens reporting from Occupied East Jerusalem. Let's now speak to Shahram Akbarzadeh, who's a research professor of Middle East at Central Asian Politics at Deakin University, joining us uh, from Doha. Thanks for speaking to us. Let's first look at uh, Netanyahu's comments when it comes to the draft proposal put forward by Hamas. He called it delusional. Do you think that he rejected it or, 
or is there still space for negotiation going forward? I think from Netanyahu's point of view, first, thanks for having me. Um, from his point of view, um, any deal with Hamas would give credibility and recognition to Hamas. So he's very averse to the idea of uh, signing a, a ceasefire deal, even end of the conflict, a peace deal with Hamas. Secondly, he knows very much that his future, political future, is tied to the right wing in uh, Israeli politics. He has people like the security minister who was uh, actively advocated the capture of Gaza and repopulation settlement of Israelis in Gaza. So uh, Netanyahu's future is very much in the hand of the right wing, and he's not going to antagonize them by uh, stepping back from his promise of destroying Hamas. Right. But the more time passes, the more risk there is that more captives are killed in Gaza by the Israeli bombing, as we've seen. So is there a timeline here that Netanyahu feels like, you know, he has to work with? I think uh, Netanyahu has accepted, and I think all um, the families of hostages have recognized uh, that the hostages are uh, acceptable collateral damage. Netanyahu is not making decisions based on the interests of the uh, Israeli hostages in Gaza. He's making decisions based on his own interest, his political interest um, in the future of Israel. Will, how much pressure do you think is the U.S. administration willing to put on Netanyahu at this point in time? We heard uh, Secretary of State Blinken in Tel Aviv uh, saying that negotiations towards a deal will continue. Do you think that he sounds uh, optimistic? I think it's quite ironic to see the United uh, States administration um, change its position from an unconditional support for Israel to uh, self-defense, uh, as that's the way uh, they presented the war in Gaza, uh, to now gradually asking Israel to modify its uh, behavior uh, try to avoid civilian death and perhaps discuss some kind of a ceasefire deal. It does put the U.S. in a difficult position, but at the end of the day, the United States is, the, is um, Israel's uh, steadfast ally in the international arena, and it's not going to um, abandon that position. So the, the pressure and the power that the U.S. has over Israel is quite limited, actually. So what happens in the next few days when it comes to this draft proposal? We have an Israeli reaction. Netanyahu says it's delusional. What next? I think, as your correspondent uh, made it clear, what next is more war. Uh, Netanyahu, Israel has the power to accept or negotiate any ceasefire, any peace deal. And the current Israeli administration under the right wing government of Netanyahu has made it clear that they have no interest in uh, a ceasefire and all the going out, they're going all the way out for the destruction of Hamas, which means destruction of Palestinians in Gaza. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Shahram Akbarzadeh, for speaking to us from Doha. Thanks for having me.